I would like to introduce Adrian Sina, an extraordinary art historian and curator from Paris who has single-handedly over the last how many years, Adrian? 20 years ago. The last 20 years, been collecting and researching and unraveling this extraordinary story of uh, Valentine de Saint-Poix, the first, we, we call her the first futurist writer, the first female futurist, and what we're discovering today from Adrian in going through this remarkable show at the Italian Cultural Institute that he's put together is this very early history of Valentine de Saint-Poix, who in 1905, I think, three, three five, six, uh, the emergence of all this question of desire, of lust, of uh, uh, power relation, political issues, everything is structured. She's really establishing this extraordinary radical take on culture, on women in culture, on politics. And Adrian, over the years, has, has expanded this discussion to look at these remarkable, remarkable women who turn to performance as a way to be radical in the culture because, in a sense, it's the same issue that's come up over and over in performance in the 70s with women artists saying that they turned to performance because it was the one area that hadn't been claimed by the men, it hadn't been claimed by the critics or the museums. It's an area that was really open and up for grabs in a sense. And we're looking at this extraordinary exhibition that Adrian's put together. It's a private collection that he has personally been accumulating. But and, and each time he found new documents, there's a revelation that comes with that. Valentina Saint-Poir working with uh, Rodin, Valentina Saint-Poir writing his poetry, writing to the newspapers, being vilified in a way for her politics. And I thought your comment was remarkable too about the sense of her, her pride and this idea. She does come from an aristocratic family, the sense of absolute power that she could, it, w it was okay for her to, um, to take on the world in a way, in this very unique way. We're now on the second floor of the exhibition. The first floor is really establishing the story with Valentine and Marinetti, and even the dates, very specifically, letters that she wrote very early on, books that she published, enormous amount of books that she published, her back and forth moving into, go did she go to Africa that early on? Um, uh, she, she went in different uh, periods, but okay. she was really established uh, from around 23 and 24, right. but she had many travels before she knew really the, the whole Mediterranean culture, which was, she, she had this idea of making the United States of Mediterranean and, and gather all the countries which were f uh, fighting uh, against each other. Could you just also describe for us what you were talking about downstairs, we were looking at her list, the feminine feminine uh, action, action exactly. as a discipline. I thought that exactly. was brilliant. That was in, in what no, no artist or notice on the back of uh, and inside of many futurist books from the edition of uh, uh, Marinetti, you have all um, uh, you have the hi uh, hierarchy of uh, the fu uh, futurist movement, Marinetti on the top of course, and uh, different disciplines, painting, sculpture, poetry, music, they are all traditional disciplines. And, and suddenly you have feminine action for the only Valentine de Saint-Poin woman of the feminist, uh, fe um, futurist movement. So, and no one understands that this is a real discipline. field of action. This is a discipline. Genre. Yeah, yeah genre. And uh, it's not just casually, she, she didn't found anything. The whole meaning of the whole process that many uh, women at this period have is a feminine action. We are, in, uh, we, we love the history of performance, and we are interested in the birth of performance. And in fact, uh, we were talking about this uh, uh, power relation. There is a shift from, the, from women as model for painters to what is not really dance, because many of these artists didn't knew dance at all. They were not dancers. Dancers were part of Russian ballads uh, with classical background. They had no background, um, and most of them recreate another language related to technology. For example, like Louis Fuller, who wanted to make make with Mary Curie a dress with radium, and you have some radium bromide here, which are still mm. radioactive, and they were all using partly technology, some of them eroticism, as a power relation to establish themselves. Because perform a performance is a, something extremely fragile. You are a person weak in the middle of a, an audience who is uh, looking at you as a sexual object, trying to um, uh, 
harass you after uh, in the stage after the performance is end. Uh, so you see the um, uh, in Valentin de Saint Point uh, dresses a kind of um, middle age armors, and many of her dances were called poems of war and love. And you have the same armors with pearls or with jewels with other women artists. So there was a real need of uh, creating a kind of distance, sacred distance, uh, between uh, the audience and themselves, and using um, all these um, uh, armors as a kind of a protection. Um, and in this ground, the real act of performance had its own birth. For example, Mata Hari, that everyone knows, she was a spy, of course. She uh, came in, in France after a trauma. Uh, she was, um, during the colonialism, uh, um, his husband made a lot of horrors in, in Java, and uh, the nurse, the nanny of uh, uh, her two children, killed one of them. Mm -hmm. And his husband just threw Matahari away. And she had no money. She came to France without any connection. And she started, she had no idea of what was dance. She wasn't a dancer. She had some remembrance of what was the sacred dances there, she saw. And she uh, tried to establish a language, specific language, and she made the first strictest performances. Do we have her? Uh, yes, of course. We have